Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father, you sent your Son to bring us truth and your Spirit to make us holy. Open our hearts to exalt you. Open our lives to reveal you. Our one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is a reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Hear what the, hear what the Spirit is saying to the people of God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 29, found on page 5 in your bulletin. We'll read the psalm responsively by the half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. 
The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And not hermit like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the fame, flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Tegash. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. The second reading is a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. Through him. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Be Have you ever heard these metaphors? He was so mad, he was spitting fire. That music sounds so blue. She looks green with envy. Now, for some people among us, those are not literary metaphors. They are real-life experiences. For instance, when Carol Crane was a child in the first grade, she mystified her teacher and her classmates when she wondered aloud why the number five, which was displayed in a row of numbers above the chalkboard, was yellow when it should be blue. Well, to everyone in the room, the numbers just looked like black lettering on white cards. Her question sounded silly to her classmates, who all laughed, and was vaguely disturbing to her teacher, who felt it didn't make much sense. Carol learned to keep her mouth shut about such things. She didn't know then that there were others like her for whom the sound of a doorbell looks like a series of triangles. Or a dog bark causes a circle with dots around it to appear in her vision. Today, she knows that she is blessed, or afflicted, depending upon your perce perception, with what is known as synesthesia a condition that causes about one in every 25,000 people to synthesize emotions with colors and sounds with objects and sights with tastes. Synesthetes, as they're known, tend to see sounds, smell colors, taste shapes, when a synesthete hears the sound of a truck backing up with that constant beep, beep, beep sound, he or she might see those beeps as a series of red dots in a string of numbers. The fives may be experienced as a different color from the twos. Circles smell different from squares. And sour foods sound different from sweet foods. Now, people like Carol are hot-wired to join several senses together in an altered building blocks of perception. I first learned about this ability because our daughter Megan is a synesthete. The condition is actually seven times more common among artists, musicians, novelists, and poets. Now, if you consider that most of the metaphors that we use in our common language came originally from artists, musicians, novelists, and poets, you might suspect that much of what we think of as clever metaphor only was first literally experienced as reality by those folks. People with this ability seem to experience the world with more intensity, and they make unexpected connections because they see, touch, smell, taste, and hear all of these things differently, which can be a real asset to people who are involved in really creative work. But this isn't the experience, this experience is not limited just to these synesthetes, excuse me, I'm tripping over that word. To some extent, the majority of us can approach this at times. For instance, when you close your eyes 
and you look back over the year behind you, or you look ahead to the year to come, do you experience the seasons or even the months in particular colors or shapes? That one's pretty common. Some have suggested that the color-coded liturgical year may have been the creation of such an experience. Even whole groups of folks can experience mixed sensory perceptions together when they are under great emotional stress. Last week's lesson about the experience of the coming of the Holy Spirit recorded a highly emotionally charged event where all of the disciples saw tongues as a fire as they felt the powerful wind. Here's a thought. Just because such perception is altered from the norm doesn't mean that the norm is correct. Just a thought. Just a thought. <laughs> Let everybody chew on that one. So consider this morning the prophet Isaiah. When God commissions him to go and say to this people, he experiences a riot of sensations that trigger emotions of both fear and awe. He sees the Lord sitting on a throne. He hears one seraph call to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. He smells the smoke as it fills the house of the Lord. He feels the pivots on the threshold shake. He even tastes the live coal that is, the seraph puts on his mouth for, to take away his sin. Now, granted, this may have been a vision rather than synesthesia. The voices of the seraphs didn't appear to him as the shapes of triangles, uh, nor did the coal on his lips give him uh, a, a sensation of sound. But Isaiah's perception of God lifts him into such a heightened state of sensory awareness that he contracts what we might call a case of spiritual synesthesia. This is clearly more than a sensational encounter with God uh, that, that we would normally have on a nice Sunday morning in church. Our perceptions of the Lord are usually on the level of quiet stirrings, not thundering spectacles. And yet we cannot dismiss the experience of the prophet Isaiah a man who grasps new dimensions of God's power and purity and grace and love through this expanded sensory perception. Our contemporary problem is not that we grasp too much of God, but that we perceive too little. In America today, God is seen as marching in step with our political parties and the prayers of our presidential candidates, with controlling social agendas, and with our national interests. God is understood to desire our prosperity and to support, in the words of the prayer of Jabez, the enlargement of our territories. You know, it is these perceptions of God that are causing so many of our young people to turn to other sources than the church for spiritual food if they don't walk away from God altogether. Even when God is perceived as a calming presence, a supportive friend, and a healing helper, even these truths can be worked together to pacify and simply maintain the status quo. And while there is great truth in these latter characterizations of God. They are not the whole truth. They certainly don't match the experience of Isaiah in the moment of his spiritual synesthesia. With his sensory perceptions racing on overdrive, Isaiah sees a Lord who is holy, high, and lofty, on a throne, lifted up, he is far above all political parties and much more pure and perfect than any human institution. The one true God cannot be shoehorned into a particular earthly program or forced to get in line with our personal or even our national interests. In fact, the opposite is true. Our goal should always be to get ourselves in line with God. 
And for that to happen, we have to have a synesthetic perception of God. One that may be baffling, but blessed, perplexing, and yet powerful. And so, this morning, we come to the ultimate synesthetic perception of God, the Trinity. Isaiah's experience actually points us to the triune God. The holy, holy, holy of verse 3 has traditionally been regarded as a theological marker of the triune nature of God. A new, synthesized perception of God. Here, God is a divine community of persons. This perception of a single God, one single being, but in this case, God is one single community of persons in that one being. Now this is certainly a mixed sensory perception. Within this community, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit work in concert to harmonize the work of creation and redemption and sanctification. Within this community, God shows both almighty power and suffering love. He reveals grace and truth in Jesus Christ and offers inspiration and new life in the person of the Holy Spirit. This perception of God is so powerful that it changes our understanding of what it means to be us, singly and together. If God is community, united in mutual love and shared purpose, then we, who are created in God's image, can be a close-knit, cohesive community as well. If God's community is creative, then ours has the power to be so also. If God's community is full of grace and truth, then these are qualities we can show. If God's community offers inspiration and liberation and transformation, ours can do no less. But how do we get there? How do we become the reflection of this image of God in which we have been created? First, grace. When we enter into the triune God's presence, we not only perceive a community of persons, but we also encounter a God of grace. Isaiah's first response when he encountered God was, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. He perceives a burning coal pressed to his lips, and he hears the words, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. The progression is clear. He sees God and then he sees himself and he receives absolution. It is a multi-sensory journey to spiritual wholeness. When we see God, we cannot help but see ourselves. In our cry for deliverance, a God of grace touches our hearts with burning coals of love and forgiveness. Burning coals of love and forgiveness. Now there is a synthesized mixed sensory experience. But now, in that touch of forgiving grace, we are never the same. Grace draws us to become a community that reflects the image of God in which we have been made. And there's one more thing that gets us there in becoming this reflection of the image of God in which we're created. Service. Forgiveness sets us up for service. The voice of the Lord calls to Isaiah, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And Isaiah answers, 
Here am I. Send me. Isaiah knows that forgiveness has freed him to go in a new direction and not to return to his former ways. He believes that the new life is being given to him so that he can serve God. And so he offers to go in whatever direction God will send him. What do you think God has forgiven you to do? The world still needs prophets, of course, those courageous souls who are willing to deliver the message, thus says the Lord, to a society that is quick to block out divine words. But the world more often needs teachers and counselors and healers and helpers and people of vision and energy and integrity in every line of work and endeavor that is being performed today. So, be a computer technician with compassion. A business person with a godly vision. A politician with a heart of self-sacrifice. A school administrator with a mission for building community. A retiree with a sense of discipleship. You know, the, these qualities may not seem to be an, an obvious or predictable fit, but that's spiritual synesthesia. And that's our challenge, to expand our perception, to catch the vision of the triune communal God, to experience God's grace, and to answer God's call to serve. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayers of the people are found in your bulletin starting on page 8. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. 
for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop, Archbishop of Canterbury, Catherine, our presiding bishop, Michael and Anne, our bishops, for Rick, our priest, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we especially pray for Plum Trent, Marion Seyfried, Patrick Haley, Elaine Cook, Bob Love, Eric Felipe, Jimmy Trotter, Amber Yanis, Daniel Loveless, Francis Robinson, Mike Joyce, Andrew Wright, Laura Stone, Larry Carlson, Pam Hockaday, Ken Howard, Emily Poindexter, Dave Reynolds, The Forrester Family, Wayne Knox, Faye Watson, Karen Ferguson, Micheline Martin, Sherry Kirk, James Hearn, Kathy Smith, Linda Belton, Dallas Brown, Tony Craddock, Norma Williams, Davis, Donna, Ricky, Ezra, Azalea, Dorothy and Jean Corn, Brenda Post, Betty Sigmund, Blythe Ferguson, Linda, Lord have mercy. And we also pray for all those serving in the armed forces of our nation, especially Randy Williamson, Ethan Rogers, Heather Maya Guyana, Jericho Guyana, Amanda Altman, Michael McCloskey, Ben Shepard, Wesley Welch, Spencer and Monet Wilson, Ralph Lee Clayton, Bo and Patty Bethay, Lathrop Smith the Fourth, Katie Curon, Charles Spencer, Adam Wilson, Tommy Mancino, Edward Allen, Lance Hass, Jim Naple Doniker, Chris Miles, Robert Murray, Caleb Butt, Roger Greer Jr., Hunter Morrell, James Perry, and Jonathan Romero. Lord protect them from harm and shield them in danger. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray for those celebrating birth birthdays this week. Joanne Piazza, Ben Frazier, and Sandra Strader. Lord, we thank you. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially Ray Dodson, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Welcome everybody, it's great to see you this morning. To those of you watching from home, we're glad you can join us. It's a wonderful day as we celebrate the nature of God and the Trinity, one being, three persons, and, and glad you could join us. Um, just to, a to, uh, couple of quick announcements. Number one, uh, this Wednesday is our first first Wednesday of June. And so we're having our time together of, of fellowship uh, bring a covered dish and join us. It's uh, we meet at six o'clock right here in the parish house, <coughs> and uh, uh, it's just a time. It's, there's no set program. We're just getting together to get together and enjoy one another and get to know each other a little bit better. And so uh, we hope you'll come and join us for that. Uh, and and you can come and go as you are able, uh, and as time permits. The, uh, the second thing is, don't forget, next Sunday, we, get, we kick into our summer schedule, which means next Sunday, the, this service is going to be at 10, not 11. Uh, so it gives us a little more of the summer as it's starting to come upon us now uh, to enjoy, and it also mm, gets us out while there's still at least a little bit less heat uh, uh, outside. I have two updates to give you. Uh, about people that are on our military service uh, re uh, list, you may have noticed that Christina Bazzacco is no longer on the list. It's a familiar name as we go through. She has retired from the military very happily and uh, gives great thanks to all of you for praying, for all of us, for praying uh, for her for all these years. She's had a very successful career. Um, the, don't stop praying for her, but she's not on our military list. That's you know. <laughs> the the other person is Bo Bethay. Bo and Patty, um, uh, you know, Bo is the great grandson of one of the titular uh, uh, rectors of this congregation, and he. Uh, Anyway, we've been praying for him for a long, long time. Well, for good reason. He, he has just been promoted to a full bird colonel. Uh, he is getting a uh, battalion command and is being moved from Arlington. Actually, he's, he's already down here. He's here in North Carolina again. He's at Camp Lejeune. And uh, so just to give you an update on him. And, uh, well... I'll, I'll do this with Sarah. And one member of the military we pray for every week just happens to be with us this morning. Chris, would you stand up? <laughs> yeah, as you so you said, as usually, you snuck in. Um, so are, there, uh, are there any other announcements? Oh, yes, please. Let us walk in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. And you are exalted as head over all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of your own have to be in you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For with your co eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in Trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night... He was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard you, save you, and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia. 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 